Good morning, everyone. I am going to be painting some snapdragons today. I typically have them in my garden, but um, I don't know, maybe it's been a little bit cold and they are not blooming these days. So we're going to, I'm gonna be looking at a reference photo I found online and I'm just gonna go through real quickly my supplies for you and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm using my 8 Velvet Touch Princeton. Uh, you can purchase um, for the student who doesn't want to invest in the Princeton brush. I'm looking for my Degato. So you can use this, uh, the Degatos. You get a whole set of these. They're perfect for the beginner. Uh, for under $17, you get 10 of them and you get all these different sizes compared to one velvet touch which i love and if you want to make that investment and can i say go ahead and do that um, is about nine dollars so these are perfect for the beginner i'm real happy with them they've kept their points and they're just a really great brush i'm using my today i'm painting in my artisto pad as you know i do love these they have the spiral and i just keep them all i just started this one but i have a whole um, cupboard full of these and I just list all of my them by seasons by color palettes for good reference and they are perforated so if you wanted to gift them you can I'm also going to be using my Paul Rubens my Lang set this is the 48 set great for the beginner because they have all your colors already uh, pre-mixed for you so you don't have to work uh, to figure that out and making sure you have your two palettes of water uh, one to wash, one to rinse, and I think that's about everything, guys. The only thing I see I'm missing is a paper towel to wipe my brush on. So let me grab that really quickly. Here we go. And that's just to, uh, you know, if you're, we're lifting or doing anything like that, we can use that. So today I'm going to be doing these Snapdragons and the color palette I'm going to use, I think the last ones that I had in my garden were, which is probably why I loved them, was this beautiful pink. Of course, no surprise there. You know how I love my pink. And I'm just using these little with the side of my brush. And then what I'm gonna do is they had a beautiful yellow mixed in with them, and I just loved that. I thought that was so pretty. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. We're just going to be using kind of the side of our brush. Now, some of these aren't open as much, so we might just do something like that. Now, I got that mixed, so it turned into more of a orangey color because I mixed my pink and my yellow and then we're going to go in when that is wet and we will add a little bit more pink to that and so using the side of my brush like that and coming down i think it's going to give us that feeling of the snapdragon so that's what we're going to be doing side of our brush come to a point so holding your brush diagonally and then coming down into that point as we get up near the top, we'll get smaller, greener. And I think today I'm gonna use mostly sap green. As you know, I usually use a mix of sap and olive, but I notice these are just a little bit more green. So using the tip of my brush, I'm gonna do something like that. All right, so let's get started on our painting. Sorry about that camera bump with my forehead. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go ahead again and I'm gonna paint the actual florals first and then we'll go in with that green. So using a medium value, just meaning about 50 paint, 50 water, and then you can tap off to get rid of a little bit of that water or tap on your paper towel. And I'm using kind of a, almost an L shape in a way. So side of my brush, something like that. Cause I feel like that's for me, what I see 
in a snapdragon so unusual and we're going to bring them kind of like that and then i'm going to wash and rinse my brush make sure that paint is out and grab a little bit of my cad yellow water that down just a tiny bit and we'll go in and add because my last snapdragons i had had a lot of yellow and pink which i thought was so pretty together so just doing something like that kind of coming up and down almost like little commas Don't want to go too far down because they have those beautiful long stalks and then i don't want to wait too long to go into this with the um, stem either so as they get up near the top they have less of a bloom so let's go ahead and go in with that beautiful sap green and we're just going to create our little stems here while this is wet so we get that beautiful blending that watercolors is known for and then all these little buds and maybe wash and rinse my brush i might just pick up a tiny bit of that pink and just dab in because maybe those are just starting to bloom I think I will use a tiny bit of that darker green and just add some different color values here. There we go. So that's one Snapdragon. Let's do another one right next to it. And again, I'm just using a little bit of the side of my brush, just scraping off my brush a bit, maybe just a little bit more water and go in and do yet another one. So I'll do another one right here next to it. Side of my brush down, side of my brush down. They kind of have some little frills there. And then I think I'll wash and rinse my brush while that's a little bit wet and just add in some of that yellow. I just thought that combination was so pretty. Now, if you mix the orange and the green, the uh, or pink and the, the yellow too much, you're gonna get that, or more of that orangey color. So, and as we move down the stalk, these get bigger. So a lot of the side of my brush I'm using, if you can see that. And then let's go in while that's wet, pick up a tiny bit of that sap green and just create that stock. And then coming out here, just dabbing to create the little blossoms on top. There we go. And because I always work in threes, I think I'll create one more in the background here, but I'm going to use a little bit more water so it looks like it's a little bit more in the background. and just tuck it a tiny bit behind this one. Just like that. And then we'll go into our green and create that stem. Oops, I picked up my olive green because that's my usual green I use. Get some of that sap green and I want it actually to be a lighter value because again, it's in the background. And let's just 
dab in there. So those lighter values are pushing it into the background. Now I might want to go in, let's just add a tiny bit of that yellow there. There we go. And use the tip of my brush, so light pressure and emphasizing some of those, you know, snapdragons have just a tiny bit of like a curlyish look to me. So I'm gonna add in some of that just with the tip of my brush and kind of letting it dance around like that. And that adds for those of you who like a little bit of that detail, it's going to add some of that in for you. Now, if you don't care about that detail, then you could just stop right where we were at. So there we go. Maybe a little bit here. Just outlining. You could also do that outline in pen if you wanted. And then I might just add a few darker values, meaning more pigment, less water, to some of these and letting that blend in. Something like that. So there you go. Those are my Snapdragons. And I think these would be really pretty with maybe some splatters. You could definitely do some splatters, maybe in that pink color. Lots of different ways to do splatters, but now again, you could have stopped right where we were and just left it how it was. One second here. Uh, these do have very much, that's why I was just looking at my reference photo, some long kind of frilly leaves. A little darker value. And I'm just using the tip of my brush here very light pressure and I'm holding close to the end of the ferrule so I have a little bit more control. Sorry for that camera shake. And there you go. I think that's awfully fun. You could add in maybe some darker shades in there just for some interest. So I used that olive green and just added in. Now, if you really wanted to get some darker, you could always go in with that and pull out in front with darker values, that's always going to pull things into the front. So I kind of went over what I drew on there, which is fine. But do you see how that really popped some of those out? Really beautifully. and made them feel like they were out front and these were a little bit in the background. I think I might go in with some of that yellow and just dab in here and there. Just to get a little bit more. Now I'm just using a wet brush, damp brush, and doing that lifting. And this is that glazing I talk about a lot where I'm going over things and adding layers and pulling out some things. Pulling out meaning I'm giving them a darker value and it just makes them pop. 
So here we could also do that. So these dark pieces right away, just using very light pressure with my brush, and immediately it gives this depth. So that's the value of working in these beautiful layers. So right now, because I went in with some of the darker pieces, this really faded into the background, which is what I was trying to do. All right, so there you go. I used a lot of the side of my brush. A Snapdragon to me kind of has this almost upside down L shape, and it has a lot of greenery up near the top. So that's how I tried to just give that look of a Snapdragon. And that's how my mind works, is just to give that feel of a Snapdragon, not to do it exact. All right, everybody, I hope you give that a try. It was a lot of fun. And um, use that Quin Magenta and your Cad Yellows. And I used an Olive Green and a Sap Green. And my number eight Princeton brush, or this wonderful Degato set, which I still love still using here five months later and you get a whole set of those so i'll i'll list those for you and um i think that's it all right happy painting everybody make sure and check out um, my new website i've got a lot of freebie paintings on there and drawings for you and happy painting everyone most of all have fun <music>